Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Ghost Thief Deadly Shadows. Last time we left off in Garrett's building, having completed St. Edgar's Eve. Let's move on and take care of day two in the city. The days where there are no new areas to explore are pretty straightforward. All we have to do is get all of the repeating loot and we'll be set. First, just maybe for the sake of practice, I always like to play with Garrett's practice locks. His basic one is left, right, left. The iron one we just bought is right, left, up, and down. And... We may be able to get... No, it's... It clipped again. There are actually two broadhead arrows on Garrett's table when you start out. I was only able to get one in the day one playthrough. And every day you have a chance of avoiding the clipping error and having the arrow show up in a spot where you can grab it. But we weren't so fortunate today. Anyway, there's no respawning loot inside Garrett's actual apartment. The only place that we need to go now is into the landlord's room. Left, down, left, up, down. I should know that. Inside here, there is a cat statuette above the fireplace, worth a hundred, and the two respawning broadhead arrows in the chest. That's it. So we can close the door behind us and head outside to South Quarter. Inside South Quarter, we'll start with the two water arrows in the stone fountain, and then we'll have the first of the Benny's Injury conversation series. And I'll talk about that once they're done. So grab the two water arrows, quick save, and head over towards this corner, but don't go all the way around just yet. You know, you should really have that looked at. I am looking at it. I mean, by a doctor. No, oh, nah, it's just a scratch or a laceration or something. Anyways, doctors cost money. Am I right? Search yourself. I'm not scared of doctor, if that's what you're thinking. Of course not. So once they're done talking, they usually disappear, which is odd, but good because it allows us to continue our exploits unmolested. So I'm going to grab the respawning gas arrow above the passage to Stone Market. They are standing right in front of the watch station while they talk, but when they're done, if you're not, as long as you're not looking right at them, they just disappear. There's my gas arrow. With that nabbed, we're gonna get the two. These were not here on the first day. I guess the Lady Elizabeth event messes with it, but they're here every other day. Inside this watch station, there are two respawning broadhead arrows. As we continue on, you'll see these every day in the city. There's one for each section. They detail your crimes committed on the previous day. So, City Watch Crime Report, District of South Quarter. The following criminal incidents occurred last evening in the vicinity of South Quarter. Zero citizens were murdered. Zero citizens were rendered unconscious by a blow to the head. 21 items of valuable property were reported stolen. Zero locks were unlawfully picked open. The above is a true and complete record of events. All residents are encouraged to report suspected incidents of crime to the nearest City Watch authority. Signed, the office of the commissioner. I think it would have been better programming instead of saying for everything you didn't do to just get those lines to disappear instead of saying nobody was murdered, nobody was knocked out. Seems odd in a crime report, but that's just me. Now there are some uh, patrolling city watchmen over here. Hello. You're a sight for sore eyes. So just be careful. I'm going to get the two broadhead arrows here next to the well which are there every day. Now I'm gonna head into this house to get the fire arrow, which is here every day. 
This is the only day where this guard is in here. Here's a book to read. Still no jobs to be found. I might have to pawn more stuff. Somebody was in here yesterday when I was out looking for work. I bet they was up to no good. I just wish they had left behind something good to drink. Ain't nothing ever goes my way. So he's staring at the fireplace, which has the fire arrow we want, which could make things a little tough, but it's actually pretty easy to get it if you just stick to the carpet, run in, grab, and run out, like so. Bam. No trouble at all. So, back out the window the same way we came in. So I'm just kind of going to complete the circle like I usually do. I'm going to head over to the South Quarter Watch Station now and get the two respawning broadheads out of there. Should be able to get in without too much trouble. There are our two broadheads. I'm gonna watch and see where he turns next. Oh, he's patrolling. Well, that makes it even easier. And just wait for him to leave. And then I should be able to cut straight over to the merchant stall. That's just another copy of the crime End report. Of a long day. Maybe tomorrow I'll get me some of that part time he worked down over at the factory. Hope they got some of those positions. So I'm gonna grab his up. three copper coins, 25 each. Now I'm gonna head into Black Alley. I'm gonna get the water arrow and the purse out of the sewer grate, and then I'm gonna grab the moss arrow out of the bush and listen to another conversation. The purse is worth 50, and let's grab the moss arrow and listen. Tell it, Fred. Nah. Sure, sure. I ain't heard it, and neither has Percy. Okay, okay. <laughs> It was a night, just like tonight, and I was walking all alone up near the cradle. Where? The Shale Bridge Cradle. Used to be an orphanage till something terrible happened. Murderers got in or some big fire. Now who's telling this story, huh? So, I was out walking, minding my own business, when I heard something. A voice, like a child weeping. And so, I started up those steps. Don't tell me you went in there. Hush! I got as far as the door, and put my hand on the knob, and then... Yes? Yes? The child's voice, as clear as anything. I'll never forget, she says, No! Go back! You can't help me! Run for your life! What did you do? What any sensible bloke would do. I run for my life, didn't I? I'm here telling you the story, ain't I? All I gotta say is, don't ever go near that place. Never. Now, who's buying the beer? So? Hey, Garrett. How's the thieving going? Just stopping in to offload my metal and gems to Heartless Perry. Now we're gonna head to Stone Market. Just for the sake of looting. We could head right to the Pagan Sanctuary, the entrance to the next mission is here in South Quarter, but, you know, I like to get all the loot every day. So we'll go to Stone Market first. Looks like nobody's around, that makes things easy. And here we go, to Stone Market Plaza. Stone Market Plaza, of course, has the most persistently difficult piece of loot to obtain, which is Mr. Brent's purse, and unlike day one when he was strolling around his apartment and taking breaks to visit his balcony, 
This time around, from day two forward, he just unrelentingly stares at his chest. So, we'll go deal with him in just a minute. Out of the way, loser. I'm going to grab the moss arrow here by the exit to Stone Market proper. And then... Wait till I can slip past our friendly neighborhood watchman. grab the moss arrow underneath the steps up to Brent's. Before I go after his purse, I'm gonna go get the gas arrow from the clock tower vent, which you can reach by jumping. I'm gonna get the moss arrow over near Tursus Courtyard. Waiting. Do a good job timing the watchman. We should be able to slip out behind him. Get the moss arrow right over here. Then I'm gonna wait for him to turn back around. I just dang it! I didn't quite realize how oddly the lighting behaved there. I was lit, even though I was by all my visual indications in a shadow. So I'll just wait right where I grab the arrow until he turns around. Because I am shadowed right here. See you later, Benny. There we go. Now I'm gonna go after Brent's purse. <clears throat> the good news is I have teased out a way to get it that doesn't violate any other supreme rules and only entails a green alert. So just creep past the drunk guard stationed on the balcony here. You can open his chest through the window pretty easy. I think the designers probably intended to make it so you could grab the purse from out here, but I haven't figured out a way to do it. Which is unfortunate because it really would make things much easier. So with that open... The reason I like to open it from outside is because for whatever reason he doesn't alert unless we're inside his apartment. So we can, uh, skip a green alert. There. I knew that was gonna happen. Anyway, we could y usually skip a green, sometimes yellow alert by opening the chest from outside before we come and tackle things. So I'll just wait here until, uh, my watchman pal is walking away. Then, mantle onto the crate. No one appreciates mantle up the balcony. Come on, G. Get up there. Once you're up here, this is a good place to quick save, because people in the street below can still see you. Of course, we'll open the door and we'll head in. I thought I felt a draft. Hold on. We may need to 
close the door as soon as we walk in. Or it may turn out to be a bad idea to open the chest, although, I don't know, he, he remains one of the most predictable, uh, unpredictable AIs in the game, which can be very frustrating. Now it must be the chest, because he can't see the door from where he's standing. Oh, but all is forgiven now, it seems. Okay, whatevs. So, the crazy thing about this is that the best way to get to the chest is speed. If you run over to the painting and flatten against the wall, you can get away with just a green alert from your footsteps. You can then creep along the wall within range of the chest to grab the purse with no, uh, nothing other than a few more first alerts, but you have to get the timing on the run exact, which can be hard to do. You also want to come from Brent's left, as strange as that might seem, it's something about his angle of vision makes it better that way. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go for it. I thought I saw something just from- This will probably take me several tries, but it does work. You can, in fact, get there with just a green alert. What's doing that? Ah, uh, guess stuff just looks different at night. And there I said it would probably take several attempts. Got it on the second try. So now, he'll green alert again as you move along the wall. Don't worry about that too much. Just creep along until you can grab the purse. It's back. Go ahead and close the chest. <laughs> Funny what a guy will make himself see. <laughs> oh, out of the corner of my Too eye. far. Then when you're creeping back out, there's another sweet spot to find where before the shadow ends. If you get too close to the chair, even when you're wall leaning, he'll see you well enough to yellow alert, which obviously we don't want. Hmm. Oh well. So. Hello? I think this is about right. Ah, forget it. One more. Another sprint. This one's easier, though. It's back. No. Quiet night after all. So there we go. Four green alerts. That's, by the way, as few as I have ever managed. But four green alerts, no other supreme rule violations, and we have that bloody purse. So... Wait for him to leave, and then... <clears throat> Let's head back this way. We need to clear the tavern before heading on to Stone Market proper. So I will we'll just let the watchman go by. No problem here. And head to the tavern entrance in the alley. Up right left, yes. So I think the setup's a little different this time. I think our downstairs guard is stationary and pivoting instead of patrolling. Which changes our strategy. Uh, 
Yep, he is. It actually makes things quite a bit easier for us. I just need to wait until he's facing the front door, and then I'll get the two coins off the table and then the wine bottles. You'll also notice that the layout of the wine bottles has changed, which is good news because we don't have to deal with the junk bottle this time, like we do with the other setup. So just grab the two coins, 25 each, get back to my shadow. Wait for him to turn to the front door again, and then shimmy over the bar into the shadow in the, I guess you'd call it the northwest corner. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Gotta move pretty quick here, but don't want to make any noise. And we should be able to creep around behind the bar without any alerts. So we get the first and second wine bottle. Get back to our corner. Then I'm kind of going to need to scout him out to see when he turns back to the front door. So, oh, not now. I see you. Okay, now so as I'm you could see, as I was saying, the top of his bow comes up over his left shoulder, so if we back up just enough to see the tip of the bow, he still shouldn't be able to see us, and we can wait until we see it swing around to the left, indicating that he's facing the door. So he's facing the diagonal right now. I'm going to wait till I see it move again. There it is. Okay. Now just creep off the edge, back into our shadow, and let's get out of the tavern. We're done. On to Stone Market proper. Which doesn't have any melees this time and will therefore be much easier to clear. Let's wait for the watchman to turn around and shadow him over to the load zone. we go. So as you can see, for whatever reason, he's got another copy of the map. So I'll pickpocket it just for fun. Inside the watch station, Oh yes, here's our Stone Market crime report. City Watch Crime Report, District of Stone Market. The following criminal incidents occurred last evening in the vicinity of Stone Market. Zero citizens were murdered, zero citizens were rendered unconscious by a blow to the head, zero items of valuable property were reported stolen, eleven locks were unlawfully picked open. Now this is what's funny to me. Somehow the City Watch is managing to only track my crimes because, if you remember day one, some people got murdered that day. Oh well, though. The above is a true and complete record of events. All residents are encouraged to report suspected incidents of crime to the nearest City Watch authority, signed the Office of the Commissioner. So, as we head into the watch station, this same drunk guy is still here and he's still drunk. We'll get the two broad heads on the shelf up above him, and then we'll grab his one silver coin. There's only one that's back every day. That will cause him to yellow alert, so we'll wait that out, and then we'll move Wasn't on. Wasn't there something here? <sighs> I would be creeping around at this hour anyway. There it is. Pretty straightforward. Now, I don't think the uh, Sunken Citadel map respawns, but I'll check just to be sure. Nope, nothing. We're good. All quiet. So I'll leave that alone. My personal preference for moving through the Stonecutter's house is actually to take the balcony exit 
well, balcony entrance, so. I'm gonna head up there. I just have to, because regardless of which, surprise, <laughs> which entrance we use, we can either use the door behind that standing watchman or the one on the balcony. But if you listen carefully, even using the balcony door so a few folks causes the watchman in the street to green alert. So, let's get in here. Hmm. can get onto the crates, then onto this edging, and then up onto this balcony. Up here, obviously you can safely pick the door open. And people will green alert when this opens, no matter what. Although, I note that the one in the street below me doesn't hear it, but the stationary one over there does. Ah well. Anyway, we'll be coming back this way, so I'll leave the door open for now. Here in the stonecutter's house, let me pause just a minute, I'm getting a phone call, sorry folks. Send you up? Uh, let me have from the from in one minute, okay? Okay, yeah, they'll send you up now. They changed the policy. Oh, well, change the policy? Okay. All right, I'll be there in one minute. Great, All thank right, you. Thanks. Sorry about that. Food deliveries here. Anyway, inside the stonecutter's house, the respawning loot are the copper ring on this table. Then if you move through here and go downstairs, the ruby and the silver coins also respawn. So make sure you grab all that, then head out this door. The only respawning goodies to worry about here are that gas arrow, which we still can't reach without climbing gloves. And we need to get the moss arrow over here. And we need to head into Cothran's Armory, where we can find two broadhead arrows and these coins in the downstairs safe. That's it for the armory. And if you'll hold just a second, I'm getting another phone call. Apologies. So with that, we're completely finished with this side, so we can head all the way back through the stonecutter's house, which is what I'll do next. Right up to the balcony. And I'll shut the door behind me. Now if you'll excuse me one last time, and I promise this is the last time, I'll be back in just a couple seconds. Alright, sorry about that, let's finish up right quick. Now we just need to get down to ground level without getting spotted by anyone, which is harder than you'd think. But, should be able to just 
because Garrett has a tendency to get stuck in the wall like he did just now. Heard something. <laughs> there we go. Don't think I For some reason I thought he'd take damage if I just hopped right over the railing like that, but clearly he won't. So if I just wait for the watchman to be away, I should be able to make that jump without any further alerts. Which is always what we're after. Your way gets us both killed, I guarantee it. Ah. Oh, there it was. Of course we can take him. I knew there was a reason I expected that to hurt me. I don't know why the uh, watchmen haven't come back, but... If he's gone, we should be able to do this. There we go. That's what I was after. Now, the chicken the three gold coins harvest. in the donation they box respawn big, every day. The they're all chicken. So get those three gold coins. Make sure you get the fire arrow out of the torch here in the illegal establishment zone. I'm gonna visit Bertha at the very end. Just want to make sure to grab the water arrow up above her and then mantle over the barrel and creep down over the small one and then onto the ground, all of which lets us creep up here to these bushes to get this moss arrow. And that's it. There's nothing else to find. We just need to get to the pagan sanctuary, so. So let's head into Black Market Bertha's, just to sell off what, what little we've today, picked up Never in mind. Stone Market. A 600 gold worth of metal and gems. Me and now, we just need to head back to South Quarter and get to the Pagan Sanctuary. So, I'll take you there and then we'll leave it. Oh, that can happen, so wisdom, wisdom dictates listening and waiting until you hear the patroller leave. I'll wait for that right quick. There he goes. Back to Stone Market Plaza. I don't miss the day... Well, technically they are still separate videos, but I'm just editing them together. I don't miss the days when all of these little city runs turned into separate YouTube videos. I think, generally speaking, this playthrough is much higher quality. I hope all of you agree. So just head through the back alley. Be careful of the watchman whose patrol has an endpoint there, but he's never made any real trouble for me. And get by him all the way back into South Quarter. And then here in South Quarter, we just need to get over to the well. That's where the entrance to the next level is. Next mission, I should say. Excuse me. Oh, there's nobody around here. Onward we go. Through the alleyway. Cut over here to the left. Be careful the watchman who's patrolling up and down here. Probably need to wait for him to get to his end point and turn around. Then we'll move into the well. Nobody can see us here. So this is an excellent spot 
to make my ending save. That's it for our day two in the city. Pretty straightforward, perfect thief. I will see you guys next time for the Pagan Sanctuary. That's it for now. Bye-bye.